Hey guys, hey there, it's Robert Smith, Robert Jean here in Oklahoma, and I just re been receiving a few messages about um, the loss of loved ones, and um, and basically what most people really don't understand is is not only how to let go of the pain, but um, knowing the devastation that this one single death or experience or or divorce and how it does play a major role in everything we do, whether it's um, in our physical health, our relationship health, um, our physical health, relationship health, our future health. So it, it is it is pretty bizarre on how the mind works. And um, you know, one, there's a video that I had listed on YouTube. It's it's the woman who. Um, She's six years old, and she comes down for Christmas morning, and um, <clears throat> she meets her mother. You know, her mother's crying, and Grandma and Grandpa, and they're all crying because last night, Christmas Eve, Dad died. Uh, the weird thing about this one experience is that it impacted her life for 40, 50 years. And, of course, um, Christmas has not been what you call so positive, um, you know, and earlier I shared about how the seasonal affective disorder and how the, the, the death of a mother a few days before Christmas, you know, he's always, he's drinking heavily. He's not very friendly with his own family. It's because of the pain of the death of mom around Christmas time. Um, and of course, always, you know, we got, we got the stresses of Christmas. We got the stresses of that. Even though this is not about Christmas and or Hanukkah, it's about pain, grief, and loss. Um, one of the biggest things that I realized about how uh, the losing or the changing or the shifting of our life because one, either you divorced or two, because someone you love died or three, you had to move or you lost a job or life is always transitioning. You're, you know, your children leave from home. All of these are aspects about what grief is and how the pain of losing something or the shifting of life because we didn't want it to happen, you know, and there's a really bizarreness to it is that, um, you know, uh, even though, you know, like the woman who came to see me and she was for nine years, she's cried every night, every night for nine years, because holding her husband's blanket about because her husband had died, died for nine years, every night crying. And of course, she's on many antidepressants and she's gained a lot of weight. And, and um, her friend had encouraged her to come see me to help work on this loss, you know. And of course, when she comes in, I mean, she's telling me that this, this, relationship was the best relationship she's ever had and she was married for 50 years but for nine years she's been grieving and feeling the pain of the loss of her husband and yet <clears throat> you know because I have having a healthy understanding about you know the loss of or the changing of or the death of uh, what do you do with it how do you handle it how do you process the information and, and unfortunately, there's a weirdness in our cultures that if you love them, you'll grieve and suffer pain because of their death. Um, you know, I personally had experienced many deaths in my life or losses, and not only because of, you know, my mother, she died this year in April, April the 2nd. Um, you know, I've lost my friends, you know. Um, um, you know, Linda Esser years ago. And, and I knew when I went to go see Linda, that was going to be the last time I would see her. And I knew that I would be in Australia. I knew. And, you know, and when you, you know, knowing how to process this information and, and letting go of the pain of this or the loss of my grandmother or my previous, my first grandmother, which is my dad's side. You know, I was just a kid, you know, and not knowing how to deal with this stuff. And the so the pain of these experiences can do one of two things. One, it allows you to heal and transform, or you're going to allow this to be a major contributor of your own today's pain. Today's pain, and you know, like 
uh, one of the, the early early days working with Sue, Sue LaRue, and I'm sure she'll probably be on here. Um, we're talking about, I don't know, I bet 10, eight, nine, nine, nine years ago. And she said she was like the grieving widow of someone she didn't know, a large amount of suffering and pain and grief. And just by using what I teach and getting the mindset about how to deal with changes that are unwanted. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean death. It could be a divorce, your children leaving you, a pet dying, or the changing of the weather, or the changing of a job. And so in knowing how to transition from this pain and allowing the gift that is really met. So this woman for, for nine years been sadly depressed because of the love of her husband and he died. And she only remembers that one week. Of course, it was a major feat for her friends to get her to come and see me because there's a weirdness to this. You know, when someone dies, you're supposed to grieve and suffer the rest of your life, which honestly is not what you call very healthy because honestly, what I know now is, you know, and, and I practice this with myself, um, you know, uh, what I believe is that, that people will come into your life and they're going to bring you two presents. One present you open and as you open it, you cry and you relive and rehearse and recall unpleasant feelings and experiences like the death of a loved one or, or that you're lonely and you miss them and you're feeling all alone. And the other gift is the gift in which they truly meant to give you, you know, which is uh, when, I, when I tell individuals, you know, that, you know, when my mother died, she didn't take all my memories with her. She left me with a lot of good memories. And when I think of Linda, Linda who died Oh, I can't even remember. I think it was 2011, maybe 2010. It was not easy because I had to actually start working on my own internal processes about how I represented these people. And my mother and uh, Linda and my grandfather, my dad. Um, <clears throat> and so I remember uh, in the seminar there in Oklahoma, in Oklahoma City here and... Um, one of the ladies said, well, can you, can you deal with the, the grief and pain of a loved one without going there? And I said, well, sometimes you can, but usually in order to heal something, you actually got to go there. And so after we worked on the, the pain and the suffering that we hold inside of our head and which we're using to self perpetuate our own pain, um, when you make peace with the pain and you hold on to the gift and the gift is what they gave you. And so working with this woman, after nine years, we started addressing her own pain. Now, of course, she's only playing one week in her mind every night. And, and so we started working on this. And of course, internally, how we hold this in our mind and what we do to ourselves. by the time we're done, we had a couple of sessions or two or three sessions. And the last one was to bring a photo album of her husband and... And by the time we're done, she was opening the good memory gifts, all the great gifts that he had given her, the great experiences. And when she thought about him, she didn't have a tear. She had a blessing in her heart. She felt good. She felt loved. And she felt honored. Because there's a part of our culture that we don't like death and death is horrible. But here's the fact. The first race was to win the egg. And the second race was birth. And the third race that you'll enter is death. The question is, what are you going to do from birth to death? Because see, opening the gifts of pain, hurt, feeling guilty and blamed, and looking at the bad stories will destroy us. And it does not honor the good things that they brought us. And that's the key. Knowing how to make peace. Now here's the bizarre thing. You know, working with Hannah, 40 years of back pain. And the back pain started because the death of her father. And her mind held on to this pain in her back by addressing the guilt, the pain, the hurt, the abandonment, the betrayals. All of a sudden, not all of a sudden, we worked a little bit. The pain left. 
and the peace and the gift of her father became real today. Because, you know, I've had somebody just recently talking about, when I talk about Linda, they go, well, you talk about Linda as if she's still alive. Or you talk about your mother as if she's still alive, and she is alive. They're both alive inside my heart, inside my head. And when I, I get emotional here, because I remember the love that they gave me. You see, I got tears. Peace. And it's good. It's good because I remember the good things and the gift. That woman who's been crying and depressed for nine years, she called me months later and she wanted to thank me. She wanted to thank me because she had been missing out on the beautiful gift that her husband gave her. And that was grandchildren. So now here she is, she, wrote, she called me, she says, I'm on a trip with my grandchildren. And you see, for nine years she still had grandchildren, but she was busy, busy self-tormenting, busy not being nice to herself. Because see, we have not been trained to handle grief and loss. And I will venture to say, this is the truth, I venture to say that majority of our personal pains, our personal woes, our, our self-loathing, depressing, miserableness breaks down to loss. Loss and unwanted changes. And not knowing how to change these, these feelings and to shift with times, those inability to, sh to let go of the hurt, the pain, the rejection, the guilt, and replaying unpleasantness in our minds is the number one cause for a lot of our problems today. Because things happen beyond our wanting it to happen. Things occur without our permission. And we didn't want these things to happen. You know, people die. And they die without your permission. Because they're on their own path. And the question is, what is most important to you? Is it honoring them by remembering the suffering, the hurts, the pains? Or is it honoring them by seeing their smiles, to remember the good times and to notice that those good times are inside you, which is truly honoring those who've already graduated and went on to the next grade. See, that's the question that you all must be conscious of. And that is learning how to love you and to be kind to you. And that's the toughest part about our culture, because see, if you love them, you're supposed to be sad and wear black and be miserable the rest of your life. Because when I think of people who passed, I feel good. I know that I feel honored that they came and gave me a present inside me, and I share this with others. And that's the most important part, because you have to understand, we're all going to die. It's just a part of the program. The question is, what are you going to do with your life? Are you going to hold on to the regrets and the pains and the, the suffering and all that stuff? Because, you know, people ask me, well, how do you deal with the death of a child or a, a, a child that died at birth or after birth? Or how do you deal with the death of a mother or a death of a pet? And it's all the same. Where's the gift? Or are you going to suffer the rest of your life? And choosing to suffer hurts not just you but others in your life. So that's one of the things that I think is so important. You know, although I have this tree behind me, I, Christmas hasn't always been the best thing in my life. I mean, there's, there's been difficult parts about Christmas and it has nothing to do with Christmas. It has nothing to do with the tree. It has everything to do with me, me and my experiences and what I'm choosing to hold. And so the most beautiful part that you can give yourself, and I've always said this, I said, Invest in your mind, invest in your heart, invest in what you do to you within you, because that's the truth. Learn how to love you from the inside of you. And so, you know, I've got, um, you know, do a lot of trainings and a lot of people, you know, once they get the spark, they get the information and they know how to change the hurtful parts, their life begins to be free free to be you and free to experience life better. So I do have an online training course about how to, to make peace with the pain of grief and loss because if you clean this up, it sets you free. And if you don't clean it up, what you hold in your mind 
how they died or how you guilting yourself or the years of caretaking, these two will be what your brain will use on you and learn how to heal yourself. It's so, so important. And so here, like I think Jackie is just here saying, she said that um, sharing over 12, see, say because of you sharing your YouTube videos 11 years ago, followed, cleaned up my own childhood traumas, reached out to others, and went to take my courses, became a practitioner. I am actively healthier. I can't really see what the rest of that is, but that's okay. Anyway, so here's the most important part, guys. Learn how to like you from the inside of you. I recommend, guys, taking the online training course. You can change yourself. The second smartest thing is to clean up everything that's unpleasant inside your mind. And as you do that, not only will you benefit from it, but you will impact those that you should impact in a positive way. I hope that makes sense. I think it's very important to do that. And as you do that, your life will get better. I don't know about you. I'm ready for a better life. I'm ready to move on. I mean, I've, that's been a crazy world in the last few years for me personally, you know, and it's been a great testament to what I've been doing is using what I've been teaching on myself, tapping on yourself, working on yourself, having friends and colleagues to help tap on me and to help me push forward. Because again, if you hold on to what used to be or hold on to the pains and how people have been haven't been so kind, you know, that's their problem. That's their noose around their own neck because I can stand before you today and say, hey, you know what? I'm learning, I'm growing, I'm proving, I'm letting go, and I'm going to continue to move forward. And that's the reason why I'm reaching out to you guys. Learn how to love you from inside you. And by doing that is making sure that your head, your temple, your brain is clean. Clean your thoughts out, clean your mind, clean up your life. So anyway... Just remember, guys, every day is a day to celebrate life and celebrate it by doing good things for yourself. Anyway, this is Robert Smith. Hey, do check out the online training course because I'm telling you, 2018 will be the year that you will change your life forever. And, um, you know, it's just like, you know, always, you know, like I like to invest because this is my this is my thinking. I think if you change this, you know, go to the foundation, you fix this one right here at the base of it, and you change the base, everything that grows on top of it will be good. Now, if your foundation has hurt and pain there, your foundation will create more hurt and pain. Clean out your head, because as you clean out your head, your life will be far, far ahead than when you started. This is Robert Smith. Love yourself, like yourself, be kind to yourself, and remember, what you do inside yourself, you're going to do to other people. So be nice. Talk to you later, guys. Also, do uh, we'll put a link here on, or somebody put a link here on the grief and loss. We'll give you, I'll tell you what I'll do. I don't know what the course is. I think it's like two or 300 bucks. If you sign up for that the grief and loss course, we'll give it to you for 40% off, whatever that is. I don't even know. 40% off, just to get you started to clean up your head. Anyway, that's Robert Smith. Peace. Love yourself, like yourself. Talk to you later, guys. Cheers.